Erev Tov, good evening, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to present today Mizmo 95 and 100. We want to discuss the place of these Mizmorim, the unit, the structure. And here we have a special opportunity to discuss Kabbalah Shabbat. I want to show that it is a turning point in the entire Sefer Tehillim. There is a dramatic event, a philosophical change in the understanding of Jewish identity in Sefer Tehillim over these five Mizmorim. It's very interesting to understand how these Mizmorim, we are focusing on the Shi'ur on Tehillim. It's very interesting to see what's the career of these Mizmorim in the Sidur. The topic of this course is not Sidur. I'm happy to talk about Sidur in another course, but what we talk now is something different. We talk about the structure of Sefer Tehillim. I do think that if we look at these five Mizmorim, at these six Mizmorim, sorry, and we will look at two of them more carefully, the first one and the last one, in order to understand the structure, we will talk about the structure of all of them. If we see how they were in included in the Sidur, we can learn a tremendous insight because the people in who included them in the Sidur, the experts of uh, Kabbalah Jewish mysticism in Tzfat, Rabbi Moshe Cordoviero, Rabbi Shlomo al kabetz we say it every Friday, we will see a brilliant, brilliant insight the way they understood it. So I would like to go and talk a little bit about the Kabbalah Shabbat because many people wrote it in the questionnaires, but I want to use it as an opportunity. How does that reflect back on the structure of Sefer Tehillim? So let's talk briefly about the structure, about the meaning of Kabbalah Shabbat. This slide is translated on the next slide into English. I prefer to use the Hebrew one and you can read it up on the next one in English. The reason to accept Kabbalat Shabbat, le kabel means to accept. In a hotel, the reception is called the Kabbalah. That's where you come in, where you are uh, accepted to the new place. And the Gemara says in Shabbat, every Friday, every Shabbat evening, one should say, Bo netze likrat Shabbat hamalka. Let's go to the Kala every Friday. That's what the Gemara says in Masechet Shabbat. Rabbi Hanina said, every sunset of Shabbat, come and we will go out to greet Shabbat the Queen, Shabbat Malketa. And he changed his, his clothes. And he said, Boy Chala, Boy Chala, to accept the Kala. And Rashi says, it is we have to get ready to greet the presence of a king. So there's something very special. And these terms from the Gemara, Shabbat, Kabbalat Shabbat, Kabbalah is not only to accept somebody at the reception, to acknowledge the, the, the arrival of somebody, it is also Kabbalah, the, the note of mysticism. That is the translation, Kabbalah, Mekubalim. So there's a much deeper meaning and a very, very uh, interesting event that the Kabbalah people, the mysticism, accepted the idea of Kabbalah Shabbat as a mystical event. It's a beautiful field for Sidur and mysticism of, of 16th century Tzfat. Talking about kingdom, talking about go to the Kala, accept her. So it is Rabbi Shlomo al kabetz who wrote his beautiful song of Kabbalah Shabbat in the middle. And we should look at a few lines. You see that these words, which we have in color in the Gemara, are present in Lachadodi, Likrat Kala, Pnei Shabbat, Boi Chala, Boi Chala. The last word is exactly the word of the Gemara for Kabbalat Shabbat, more than a thousand years later. And you should dress yourself with new, with new clothing. That's a new interpretation of the Talmudic source. However, the inclusion of six chapters from Tehillim and two more chapters afterwards is very meaningful. Six days before Shabbat and one day is the seventh day Shabbat right afterwards with an additional day. And here in the previous slide, I presented that with the numbers. You see the figures here. We have Lachadodi here, six chapters here, 
uh oh, something went wrong. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and where is 100? Why did they replace that? Didn't they learn the context of the, the, the contextual interpretation of Tehillim? That can't be. You will see they had a brilliant, brilliant insight. It's for me remarkable to understand how brilliant it is. It took me 10 years to understand that because I actually started my career, my interest in Sefer Tehillim, be, uh, trying to understand the Sidur. That's where I started my journey. And I wrote something for the wedding of our daughter. And it was obvious to me that there is something very, very interesting. And that was over 10 years ago. I started a wonderful journey to learn Tehillim. I hope today I will be able to give you an answer why they replaced that. Why did they replace chapter 92 and 93, which is said afterwards, and they say it, and it's actually, and they say it afterwards, but the place of 92 and 93 is before 95. What did they do? You will see how brilliant, brilliant they are, but for that we have to go to the journey to understand first the structure of Sefer Tehillim. So let's remember where we stand in our book. We finished the first two books, King David's Life, the destruction of the third book, 17th chapter, and the restoration in the fourth book with 17 Mizmorim as well. And we learned that King David, who officially disappeared from the surface, is actually present very much afterwards. He gets more and more active. We spoke about one, two, three, four Mizmorim, and at the end, even eight. So he gets very active. And we saw the role of Moshe in the third book, and we saw the doxicologies, the, the, the doxologies, sorry, the doxologies at the end, which are typical for the third book. Everything is gone, empty here, and afterwards we see the Amar Kol Ha'am, Amen, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And the entire nation will say Amen and will start an experience of Hallelujah here in white and blue. The Hallelujah starts here. We have to change our mind. We have to learn. We have to come to a new understanding of our life and our mission in the fourth book. And that's what we saw in the structure of the fourth book, starting with Moshe, and we learn our new mission after the Churban for the return to Zion and the rebirth of Israel in the land of Israel. That's the structure of the fourth book, as we discussed uh, previously. There is a change in the pre-exilic understanding of Jewish life and the post-exilic understanding of the Jewish religion. It changes. This transformation is discussed in the, uh, in the fourth book. And here's the fourth book. We discussed these issues, but I want to show you a very interesting example. We will focus today, we spoke about lecture 16, chapter 90, lecture 17, chapter Mizmor Shirli on Shabbat. And today we talk about Tzadihei, Tzadivah, this unit. Six Mizmorim in a wonderful structure, wonderful message. Next week we should be talking about 102. And at the end, we uh, the, the Shiva afterwards on the ending of the fourth book and the transition to 107. What is the flow? The flow is summarized in this clip. Before there was the Jewish nation in Israel living there at the time of King David. And afterwards they come back. But they come back from the exile and have a deep experience and the awareness. We come back from the exile from the four corners of the world and we integrate something from there. We have a universal understanding of life. It's not only our nation the way it was in the first temple period. After coming back from the, from the exile, we are aware, we are responsible, not only for ourselves, but for the entire world. We are engaged in tikkun ha'ulam. And that is a major basic message of the change at the beginning and in the fourth book that will change specifically in these mizmorim, as we shall see. We still remain in inspired by King David. About King David, it says at the end of the third book, God says that King David, he will call me, uh, you are my father and you are my God and you are the rock of my deliverance. But he is dead afterwards. 
But Hashem promises in chapter 91, after the restoration, he says, everybody from the Jewish people who will call me, I will answer him. Everybody will be like King David. He called and was answered, and we can call. King David said, should call Hashem Tzul Yeshua Ti. The term Tzul Yeshua Ti connected this way appears only twice in Tehillim. If we say the term is inspired by King David. That was one of his last words in his last chapter in 89. If we continue to say that, we continue his legacy, we continue his mission. So I welcome everybody to be a son of David. Everybody is a Mr. Davidovich or Davidson or a David man or a Ben David, everybody. We all continue by saying, we continue what he started with That is a beautiful observation to the first pasuk of this unit, which goes back to 89 and uh, previous Pasuki. Here is the Mizmo, which we are going to read now. Lechuna <laughs> ואנחנו עם מראיתו וצון ידו. היום אם בקולו תשמעו. אל תקשו לבבתם כי מריבה כיום עשה במדבר. אשר ניסו נאבותיכם בחנוני גם ראו פועלי. ארבעים שנה אקוט בדור ואומר עם תועי לבב הם והם לא ידעו דרכי. אשר נשבעתי באפי אם יבואון אל מנוחתי. You could hear hopefully from my voice the excitement in the first part, where there is a call to thank Hashem as the creator of the world and he is the shepherd of Israel. Very, very excited that we are coming to worship him. He created the world, Asahu, and he created us, Oseinu. We are part of the creation. As creatures, we are part of the creation of the creator, Asahu, Oseinu. And we are his we are his nation. We are the flock and the sheep, the sheep under his hand. However, in verse 7b, there is a totally different tone. There is a warning. There is a rebuke. Would you only listen to Hashem? If you wouldn't be stubborn as you were in the desert, as your parents were in the desert, I would swear you will not come back. You will not come to my menuchati, to my resting place. Which nation was standing in the desert? The nation of the desert. But who is the nation who can say, our parents were there and we shouldn't do the same mistake? We shall see in a moment who that is, who this generation is. It's funny that there is a beautiful nigun for the Chazanim, actually no reason to be that happy for in the second part of this mismo. In the middle, these, this, these words are very tough. Hayom im bekolot And Chazal say, when is Mashiach coming? And the answer is, today, if you only would hearken to his voice. So that is a very tough rebuke. Stop doing mistakes. Start to understand and to listen to the voice of Hashem. There is a major turning point without, within this mismo, which affects all the following mismorim, as we shall see. Let's take now a closer look at the structure of this mismo, which has a very clear and beautiful message. <clears throat> we see here, go lechu naranana, and afterwards he calls them, bo nishtachavem nichra, come in the temple, and if we come and we are motivated to go to the temple, we want to worship Hashem and bless him, that will bring us to the situation that we will go 
im yevoun el menuchati, the condition to come to the menucha of Hashem, to the place of his resting, Eretz Yisrael, the temple is, that we come and understand our, our uh, responsibility. We spoke about os, asahu osehu. We have osenu. We have to understand God as the creator of the world and we as part of that for the future. I'm not sure which graphic presentation, which design works best for you. And I'm myself not sure. I'm happy to hear comments. You're welcome to send me uh, emails with your comments. What I did here, I integrated what we had in other uh, presentations. Here, the green part, here, the red part, connections within Tehillim, and here, the green one, connections, intertextuality outside. What I did here, I included them on the same line and took them together. And we spoke about the term Yikra'eni Yetzur Yeshuati, Yikra'eni and Sur Yeshuati, which we had before. So I don't have to repeat that, but I want to show you now something very interesting. The term of son marito, we are his, we, he is our shepherd and we are his nation, appears four times in Tehillim and two times in the Nevi'im. In Tehillim, we spoke about it, that we remain his nation. Regardless that they kill us, we will tell your Tehillah forever. It's mentioned beforehand in Asaf, and it appears in Tzadihe, and in the counterpart in Mizmo 100. Pretty much the same term, as we shall see later, If we look at it a little bit larger, uh, enlarged, you see that these two Mizmorim from 100 hundred are actually the same as we have in Mismo uh, 95, in our Mismo. So our Mismo statement, God is our, uh, Hashem, he is our, is our God, and we are his nation, Hayom uh, Imbekolo Tishmo, is actually, appears in Mismo 100 as a closing. Know that he is God, it doesn't say Elohim, no, Elohim, who asanu is very much the, exactly the same. Velo anachnu, we'll talk about the two readings, kri v'ktiv, amo v'tzon marito. What is the reason that these statements are mentioned in Tehillim, but they go back to Yirmiyahu in Yechizkel? We should go back and have now uh, our time, time for an hour, to read Yirmiyahu and to read Yechizkel. Yirmiyahu accuses the leaders of Am Israel that they do not care of the Jewish people. They neglect their responsibility for Tzon Mar'iti, for, the, for Am Israel. And the same says Yechezkel, you are not doing the proper job in your responsibility as leaders of Am Israel. You don't lead them the proper way. What says Tehillim? Now, and that was before the, before the exile, now comes Sefer Tehillim and says only in these six, six places the, the term Tzon Marito is mentioned. To tell if Yirmiyahu and Yechezkel were disappointed that, that the leaders of Am Yisrael do not fulfill their job to lead Am Yisrael and therefore the exile started, Sefer Tehillim says, now we want to be your nation and you should be our shepherd. That is actually a complementary statement, as we saw many times in previous shiurim, what the Nevi'im say, the word of Hashem, and what Yeshayahu say, and what, uh, what Tehillim says, our attitude. We want to get, we want to be responsible. We know at the end of the ex, uh, before the exile, people were not responsible to take care of a proper leadership of Am Yisrael. But now we want to behave properly. That is an answer Tehillim is an answer of the, of the rebuke of Yirmiyahu and Yechezkel, a very powerful statement, in my opinion. And here we have another example, which I would like to point out. I will not show all, uh, all of them, but that is a very, very meaningful one. Yechezkel says in his chapter 20, he says, I took you out of Egypt, and I took you a long journey in the desert. 
and you were in the desert for many years. And I was expecting from you that you should understand, you should understand the ways of Hashem. The 40 years in the desert are also a punishment, but also an, expation, an, an um, educational experience. But also for the generation after the exile, we are in the Midbar Ha'amim, in the desert of the nation, in the diaspora. And he asked them, come back. And your sons, Va'omar el b'nechem ba'midbar, b'chukei avotechem al telechu, behave pro properly, do not make the mistakes of your father. And I will bring you el midbar ha'amim, in the desert of the nations, and I will judge you there. The way I judged you when you when your parents were in the desert, this way I will judge you. That is exactly the counterpart of what we say in Tehillim. Do not be stubborn the way your parents were in the desert. Behave properly. That is addressing the nations at the second exile before they come back from Babylon. The same way the first exile in Egypt was in the desert and didn't behave properly. Now it's your challenge. It's your challenge. You should behave properly. So this statement, Hayombi Bekolot says, now, after the exile in Bavel, please do better than your parents did when they were in the desert of Sinai. Do better than what, than, uh, than what you did so far. You, and that's the only way you will come back. This pasuk in Yechezkel is a counterpart and is explaining the Bible. I'm not explaining that I explain the Bible. It is the explanation of the Bible of Yechezkel who explains beautifully the pasuk and the term avotechem midbar together appears in the entire Bible only in, the, in these two places together. That's the proof by the technique of the contextual interpretation. And now, since we understood that, and we understood we have to do better after the desert, the time in the desert of the nations, second uh, coming back from Babylon, uh, we have to do better than our parents when they were in the desert of Sinai. That is the message, which is the punchline of chapter 95. What do we have to do better? What exactly is our job? Please tell me more about it. 95 doesn't spell it out. We will see that what happened in between is the answer. And now we come to chapter 100, which I would like to read now as the counterpart of this unit. Let's read this mismo. It's a short one, even a shorter one. And we should compare it to the first to 95. Here's the Mizmor. Mizmor le Toda. Hariu la Donai kol haaretz. If do et Adonai be simcha. Bo le fanav birnana. Deu ki Adonai hu Elohim. Hu asano. Velo anachno. Amo vetzon marito. Bo sharav be Toda chatze rotav be teila. Hodulo. Barachushmo, Kitov Adonai lo olam chazdo, Vad dor vador emunato. What does this Mizmor say? All the earth, who is that, will come and worship Hashem. And there should be thanking God in the temple for everything he does and his, uh, and his chesed and his emuna, his kindness and his faithfulness for all generations should be. Uh, celebrated. Who is this Mizmo talking to? Is it talking to Am Israel? Is it talking to all nations? Is there any indication that to answer this question? And that's a very basic understanding how to understand this, this Mizmo. Talking only about Am Israel? If do et Hashem besimcha? Yes, if we hear, hear the beautiful songs. If do if do at Hashem besimcha, you should you should think, oh, we should do that. We the Jews, but is that what the what the mizmor is all about, or is are all nations addressed? So I would like to ask you now: Is Susan here? 
Yes, I'm, I'm right here. And um, we weren't able to set up the poll, but if everyone can put in the chat if, how you vote either an N for nations or an A for Am Israel, and, uh, and then I will tally up the vote and you can say uh, what you think the Ms. Moore is talking about. Thank you. Thank you. So Susan will be the jury, the, the judge for the official judge for the elections. You know, in Israel, if we have twice a year, we have elections. That's a very classic habit in Israel. All the time, Pchirot. I think it's a good opportunity to have your Pchirot. Is this Mizmor read by the Jew talking to the Jew? Or is it a Mizmor which is addressed to all the nations? And it is relevant for all the nations. I would like to ask to answer this question with an A or with an N. And I think it's not just for the fun that we do that. It is to understand where do I stand, where do I stand when I read the Mizmor? You can imagine that this Mizmor for non-Jewish readers is very meaningful. It doesn't make it doesn't mention, oh, it actually does somehow mention Am Israel in verse three. But is the topic Am Israel? Or is the topic all the nations? That is a very crucial understanding for who, who is addressed in this Mizmor. And I think uh, I want to elaborate it now. And please answer your questions. I will ask Susan in a few minutes what she thinks, uh, what the audience thinks. We are invited to go and vote. We will see that there is a lot of similarity and differences to Tehillim between 95 and 100. We saw before that one pasuk is almost a repetition, a, a copy of this pasuk with minor, very tiny, but meaningful differences. So what happened? And there is a distance of six mismorim, four mismor in between are talking something for the intertextual interpretation. That is of course of greatest interest and we sh you should see how wonderful, view in, uh, how wonderful the insights are, I believe, by comparing these mismori. So let's take now a look at these, uh, at these mismo, at this mismo. We see that mismo le toda, what do we thank for? It is a song of thanksgiving. Hariu l'ashem kol ha'aretz, all nations, or all earth. We will see in a moment that all earth is mentioned to Mizmorim before. And in the sheet which I showed you that you can fold, you will have it much easier if you take that and you look at it as such a sheet, sorry. And you look at it, you can open it. Uh, sorry, it doesn't show nicely here. We will see it later in the presentation. Hariu Lashem Kol Haaretz has a history, two chapters before. If do it Tashem Simcha. I will read it now here the way I want to, I think it's better to present it. If du et Hashem besimcha. We had this statement of if du et Hashem. The sentence of if du et Hashem, we know that very, very well, this, this pasuk. We know it from chapter two. There it says, if du et Adonai bidira, vegilu birada, if du et Hashem, appears in Tehillim only twice. At the beginning, the nations are encouraged to respectfully serve Hashem, worship Him. If not, they will be punished. It is yira, it is respect, it is fear. Now they are invited, if do it Hashem, with a totally different attitude. Simcha, enjoy. And you should be excited to come to Hashem. It's another invitation, a totally different attitude. That is one of the differences which I would like to point out here. Another difference, another important point is that mismo uh, tzadibet, which I would like to compare. Sorry, I will enlarge it again. Look at these similarities which we have between chapter 100 and between chapter nine. Oh, Great. welcome okay. back. Welcome back. We were in the middle of chapter 100. My sincere apologies for that. So what are we, what's the difference 
What? No. First of all, let's be aware that chapter 100 is repeating a lot of motifs of chapter 95 without going into details. You see the words here, mizmo le toda is mizmo shir le yom ha-shabbat, tov le hodot la Hashem, u le zomer le shimcha el yom. These are the same words. The word emunatcha, chazdecha ve emunatcha are repeated here. The, 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 in, chap, in chapter 95, 92, the poet was happy that he's together in the, in the yard, in the, in the homes, v'chatzrot Eloheinu, and we are inviting the entire world to come to the chatzel. The experience, the Jewish experience of 92 is repeated in the experience of 100. If it was in 92, I survived, good for me, I'm here, and every fool people will not understand it, chapter 100 says everybody should come. Everybody can understand it. Everybody is invited. That is a major change. And I summarized you here that chapter 100 takes typical terms of very, very typical. It appears only twice. It appears in chapter 98. And all nations should come. And chapter 96 says, Bo lechatzraktav, come to his to his courtyard. That's what we say in 100. Baruchu Shmo, you should sing to Hashem, all nations, and bless his name. The term bless his name in the entire Bible appears only twice, 96 and 100. So what do we see here? We see here a fascinating insight. The insight is, that all nations are welcome to worship Hashem. That is an invitation to all the nations as we, hold on. That's an invitation. And we see what I will show you on the next slide, that chapter 95 and 100 are very similar. We got the taste before. We read them both, but they have another meaning. They have another message. 95 says, Am Yisrael, you better do what you have to do and you will not fail the way your fathers failed in the desert. Do it right. Don't repeat the mistake of your fathers in the desert. Now in the desert of the nations when you come back from the exile. And chapter 100 says, yes, we try to accomplish what we were told in 95. And here we have this slide, which is uh, I try to do my best on modern technology teaching technology and the teaching technology tried to show the way I have it on the handout here that you could fold it and see this entire idea the next two slides which I presented last week how to print it out you hold it like that or you open it and have the entire page there I put a lot of thoughts into it and let me present a very difficult structure no not very difficult a very fascinating structure, which we say every Friday night without chapter 100 for a good reason. Chapter 95 is the opening and talks to Hashem about Elohim, Elokeinu, our God. Chapter 96 and 95 here talks about Elohim as an expression of idolatry, Elilim, which are their idols, that which are no gods, al el, el lilim. No, not one time the word Elohim is mentioned here as an expression of holiness of his name. It is Elohim, the wrong gods. Nations, stop worshiping the wrong gods. Start recognizing Hashem. That is Elilim in green. On the left side, Chapter 98 and 99 talks about Elokei Nu, our God, the Jewish people is talking. And look how beautifully at the end it says, Ki hu Elohim, he is God. He is not an idol, al kol Elohim, all the other gods. He is the monotheistic belief system, God is one, Ki hu Elohim. We talk to all the nations. All nations should have understood from Am Yisrael 
that we are his nation, but we are his nation for the entire world. Now look how beautifully, beautifully that is presented here, the analogy between 95 and 100 by the words which you have in red. And I cannot elaborate them, them now in detail. Please read it, learn it every Friday night, how they are, uh, what the analogy is. Unfortunately, 100, not no, for a good reason, 100 is not included. Chapter 90, 98 and 97 are in full analogy to chapter 98 and 99. The same opening, Shiru Lashem Shir Chadash, Mizmo Shiru Lashem Shir Chadash. At the end, almost the same pasuk. The same verse here. Chapter 97 starts with Hashem Malach, talks about Anan, Mishpat, Ishtachavu, Kocho at the end. The same is true for chapter 99. A perfect analogy. It's hard to understand how one can understand the structure without using PowerPoint. Here you see it very clearly. Analogy from 95 to 100, and the analogy from 96, 97, the nations, to 98 and 99 for Am Yisrael. We as Am Yisrael should go out to all the nations and invite them to worship Hashem the way we do it. And look here, Hariu Lashem Kol Haaretz is mentioned here, and it appears in 100. The term Baruch Shemo is mentioned here, and appears here, Baruch Shmo. Bo lechatzrotav is mentioned here, Bo she'arav betoda chatzerotav betila. So 9500 is a summary of the whole story. I feel obliged to quote whoever I could learn from, and that is something I thought I found myself, but I found it afterwards in a beautiful German paper by Professor Jeremias from Marburg, and he says, that its wording of chapter 100 is full citation of 95 and 98, which are combined with each other in order to interpret 93 to 99 as an invitation to all the nations to acknowledge God and to participate in Israel's worship. These mizmorim invite the entire world to worship Hashem together. That's the message. We are Am Yisrael. Yes, we are the chosen. We are the chosen to lead others and to tell others, stop with your mistakes, nations. Come to the home of Hashem. And that's what we are going to do in full analogy, beautiful geometric analogy between 96, 97 for the nations and 98 and 99 for Am Yisrael. We lead them and we bring them all to debate Hashem. All nations will worship him. Now we understand that if do it Hashem besimcha, in chapter two, we mentioned if do it Hashem beyira, nations. But now you should come with a comfort level and with enjoyment to worship with us together, Hashem. That's the message, but that I think I would like to answer. I'm curious to hear, Susan, what was the result of the of the vote? Well, we have 26 votes for all nations, and we have 15 votes for Am Yisrael. Okay, classical situation, we need a coalition. So that is a classical situation. Nobody has a really, uh, I, know, I don't know how to analyze the results, but let me show you. I think here is a change to understand our identity, our job. During the diaspora, anti-Semitism, we were a synagogue and the ecclesia thought they are the chosen and we make sure Yiddish Kindalach, we have our worship. Baruch Hashem, we survived 2000 years back to Israel, Ashreinu Matov Chelkeinu. But we were threatened by others. We were hatred, there was hatred. And we have to survive despite the hatred of other nations. We didn't care to invite them for the worship of Hashem. So that is the attitude of, I think, the, the Jewish parsham. That's the place where he stands. And you cannot disconnect the place where he stands and the way he reads the text. But let me show you three psukim from Yeshayahu, Zechariah, and Tehillim. 
which I believe are all the second temple period. And you see in Yeshayahu, my home will be a home ki beiti beit filai kale lachol ha'amim. My house will be a house for prayer for all the nations. And in Yezechariahu it says, Am Yisrael should be happy. Roni v'zechi bat Zion. Ki hine niva v'shachanti betochech nurum Hashem. I will be in your, in your city, says Hashem, in the Jewish city. But what is the message? What's the, what's the, the, the mission of Am Yisrael? V'nilvu goyim rabim el Hashem bayom hahu. V'hayu li la'am. Many other nations will join you, and they will all be my nation. And I will be in, in your city with all the nations together. We learned that in chapter 80, uh, 47 and in his analogy in chapter 87. The concept that synagogue and ecclesia, the classical symbol, which costs a lot of blood and hatred and anti-Semitism, there is a new picture of synagogue and ecclesia in our time. They sit together and learn. And I don't have enough time to discuss. Are they ready to come to our, to our Beit Hashem? I don't have enough time to discuss. Are we ready to accept everybody in the Beit Hashem? It's a great discussion. And I think there is a lot to think about it. Mismo 100 invites everybody to join us. And now we have a beautiful detail, which it, it says in the Mizmor, Ki lo anachnu. As you see here, we can read that in two ways. De'u ki Hashem hu Elohim, hu asanu, velo anachnu. Amo v'tzon marito. You should know God is Elohim, not Eloheinu. He is Elohim for everybody. Who asanu, the same way in chapter 95, God created the world and created us. Now we say he created all of us. We have something in common, all the nations. Who asanu, velo anachnu, and we are not separate, or velo anachnu, we are all together belong to him as his world. These are two ways to read it. And I think the only right answer is, a and N. There is a double reading which is so powerful and meaningful. There is no mistake by velo velo. It changes the meaning of the pasuk by 180 degree. It can't be that message A is true and the opposite is true as well. It's not logic. But the message is both is true and all the nations are part of it. So that is the structure of the, all nations should join. And now we come in the last few minutes to the Kabbalah. Allow me, uh, due to the, uh, the technical issues, allow me to elaborate that because we see here an outstanding insight. That's where I started, uh, one starting points of my learning in Tehillim, uh, Kabbalah Shabbat. And I saw these analogies and why is chapter 90, 100 is, is not here? It's missing. Now you should open you should fold your sheet which you have here accordingly. You don't read it this way, you read it this way. And you see another understanding by changing one mismo. 100 is replaced by, nine, eight, by 29, which is the middle of the third cycle from the first book. And it talks about Am Yisrael and Am Yisrael only. You see here at the end, we pray to Hashem, he should, he should give strength to Am Yisrael and he should bless his nation in peace. That's a Jewish prayer. That's a classical A. What does it say at the beginning? You should all come. Havu l'adonai b'nei elim, havu l'adonai kavot v'oz, havu l'adonai kavot shemo, hishtachavu l'adonai v'hadrat kodesh. The same verse is quoted in chapter 96. But now the invitation is not to Am Yisrael, to the entire world. Havul Adonai Mishpachot Amim. Havul Adonai Kavod Vaoz, Havul Adonai Kavod Shemo. Seu Mincha Uvo Lechatzrotav. Hishtachavul Adonai Bahadrat Kodesh. All the nations. It's an opening of our gates wide open. All the nations should come. That is our mission. 
That's our mission. We should not fail our mission. We failed the mission when we were in the desert. That's our new challenge now. Forget about, says the Pshat, 29, it's only for Am Yisrael. 96 says, expand it and open the doors to the entire world. What, does the, what do the Chachmei Kabbalah do, the Kabbalists in Sfat? They took off chapter 100, which is so open-minded. And for the citizens of the entire world, everybody will come. And they say, no, 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 wait. Now let's look at the structure of Kabbalah Shabbat. Now we understand what happens in Kabbalah Shabbat. We have to accept Shabbat. Great. Dress for Shabbat. Get ready for Shabbat. Tekabel Shabbat. Accept the king, the queen. It's a wedding. Wow. Ayidish chasene. Am Yisrael and Hashem, they got married. And we remember Har Sinai. So we remember Har Sinai, a very personal meaning, a very personal relationship, Kabbalah Shabbat. When Am Yisrael was at Har Sinai, we learned about Shabbat. But what did we learn about Shabbat? That Am Yisrael should stick to the, every Shabbat to our legacy to worship Hashem, accept him as a Melech, as our Melech. And we focus, it's a Jewish wedding. Hashem and Am Yisrael, the Kabbalah. And it is, it is for Am Yisrael. That is the meaning of Shabbat. Why is it switched? For a very simple reason. With this idea that we should get ready for all the nations, yes, but now it's time for our personal wedding with Hashem. That's the way I want to celebrate Shabbat. Let's stay for Shabbat, our close relationship. And that is the meaning, the reason why it is flipped, not talking about Shabbat, and we are opening the doors from the Shabbat experience, the Jewish Shabbat experience later on to the entire world, that is the Pshat. No, we are now going inside to our Jewish experience. That's Kabbalat Shabbat. However, if you read Kabbalat Shabbat carefully, you see Shamor Bezabochor Bedibur Echad Hishmianu El HaMiyuchat, we were told that Har Sinai Shamor Zachor, but the goal is on the long term, Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. That is the end of Zechariah, of Zechariah. Vayashem lemelech al kol haaretz bayomu yashem echad ushmo echad. We should at the end be strong from our personal experience at the wedding with Hashem. We should be strong to go out to all the nations. And that is what we say, Yaminu Smol Tifrotzi. We go left and right. I quote here from the beautiful research of Ruben Kimleman on Lecha Dodi and Moshe Chalamish, who, who worked a lot on these topics in his uh, beautiful work. We experience our experience, we have our experience, but we got ready to make a tikkun haolam. Yamin usmol tifrotzi, Shabbat should go left and right. Where is left and right for Shabbat? Left is Friday and right is the Sunday, the holy Shabbat for Christianity and for the Islam. It goes to all the nations. And the song, Likat Kala, Penei Shabbat Nekabela, ends always with Lamed Hay, twice. Lamed Hay is 35 in get the numerical value, times two, which is 70, the 70 nations. We, will, we keep the Shabbat in order to be a all goim for all the nations. That is the Shabbat Kabbalah Shabbat experience. We start with this awareness for all, the, for all the world. Now, Shabbat Shalom. We should have our Shabbat experience. We should accept this message. That is the Shabbat experience. Now, let's compare that. If we compare the flow in Tehillim, we have two attitudes, two, two schools. But they are not contradictory. They explain each other. Back to the contextual, to the in contextual interpretation of Tehillim. That is the message we re recover in the, in the fourth book. It is the Jewish experience. The Jewish people comes back to the Torah of Moshe and the uh, a recovery, a rehabilitation of the world. First, we, and we want to do that for the world. Chapter in Tehillim, it continues with this beautiful unit of six Mizmorim. Our experience in 96, has to, in 95, has to go out 100, the Jewish people invites all the nations to accept upon themselves God's kingdom. That is Tehillim. And beautiful analogies 
which I don't have the time to elaborate again, we mentioned it. Let's just see what it says very, very clearly in chapter 96, where my uh, sign is, Im ruva goyim Hashem malach af tikon tevel baltimot, yadin amim b'meisharim. Tell the nations, Hashem malach, Hashem malach, Bring our message of Am Yisrael from 93 to all the nations. Make it the message, a Torah for all nations. That is the message in Tehillim. If we have first our Shabbat experience, we relax, we come to ourself, we have our understanding and our insight, and we recover from the traumatic experience of the Galut back to Shabbat in order to be a light for all the nations. That's Tehillim. So, uh, Kabbalah goes the same way, it goes the same uh, uh, stations, but from another direction. We have, and that is most important, Mizmor 100 is said every day in the morning. Every day we say Mizmor Kuf, every morning in uh, Psukei de Zimra, but not on Shabbat. Why? On Shabbat we are not concerned to go to all the nations. Shabbat we can rest and enjoy our wedding with Kiddush Baruch Hu. That's the other experience of the Kabbalah. Therefore, they know that Mizmor Kaf, Mizmor Kuf, is not missing in the Sidur. It's very much present every morning in Psukei de Zimra. We, 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 our daily life is dedicated to Kadesh Shem in all the nations. Invite everybody in the diaspora, wherever we are. That is Mizmor Kuf, an integral part of every day of our prayer. However, when it comes to Shabbat, take this idea, take these uh, Shabbat experience, take all these six Mizmorim, just do me a favor for Shabbat. Our wedding, we do not need the hundred. We need instead of that, a strong Shabbat experience by having 29. Go inside to you, rest, to understand your call from Hashem to be Hashem Yevarechet Amova Shalom in order to be ready during the week to fulfill chapter 100. So that is an outstanding chidush of the Kabbalah. I enjoy tremendously to read these two books by Kimmelman and Chalomish. They did not have this insight and it took me now nine years to come to these insights and I think that was the meaning of the Kabbalah, that we should learn strongly what we do for ourselves in order to be strong for outside. We summarized that we spoke about the structure of these six Mizmorim, an outstanding structure. It is a crucial part of the change from the first two or three books, the first temple period talking about Am Yisrael in the homeland, after the diaspora, after the exile, we come back but we, we share responsibility for all the nations, from all the nations, from Yerushalayim, to be a place where everybody, all nations, should have a Beit Beit Filai, Karelach Olamim. We need a change in our attitude to be open for everybody, and we need, we need a change in the attitude of all the nations to accept the monotheistic idea. That was understood, I think, beautifully by the Kabbalah, they were pioneers. I have no other way to understand what they did to these Mizmorim other than a deep understanding of contextual interpretation. First 92, uh, first 95 to 99. Delete for a moment 100. By the way, some had 100 included and just added on 29. And afterwards, enjoy Shabbos, the Jewish Shabbos experience in order to be strong from the Shabbat rest to worship the whole world, to bring them all together to worship Hashem. That's a major, major philosophical insight of the Bible, of Sefer Tehilim, and of these six chapters. We discussed chapter 95 to 100. Next time, I want to focus on 102, but you can imagine that chapter 101 and 106, the, the rest of the flow of the fourth book, will be the topic for next week's Shiur. The focus is 102. Thanks for your attention. Please, Susan. Okay, Rabbi Benny, so we're going to um, go to the questions. Um,
that people uh, have asked. So I'm just going to start at the very beginning. If we go back to Ms. Moore um, 95, um, and we see there that there's a change from a leader speaking in verses 1 to 8, um, and then in verse 9 to 10, Hashem is speaking. Um, so it seems to be a conversation that's, that's going on, the first part being... Um, being uh, that 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 uh, Amisrael speaking and, and the second part that Hashem is speaking, would you like to address that? Yes, I think it's a correct statement. It is not from eight; it is from seven B, and I tried to highlight that with the colors. That oh, we want to worship Hashem and accept Him as our Creator, and we want to be His nation, but Hashem right away tells them, "Kimbalach, please now do it, please right." If you are motivated to do so, Hashem interferes and says, oh, do it right. Do not be stubborn the, the way it was. I think that is a correct comment. I, I mentioned it when we spoke about the structure of the Mismo, and uh, it's true. I confirm. Now it's my uh, time, Susan, to ask you. <laughs> I want to ask you, we discussed before we, uh, when we prepared the shoe, I'm blessed that Susan and Audrey helped me a lot how to prepare it on many levels. And what, what do you think about it, Susan? Um, well, uh, I, I concur with the, uh, with the uh, people in the, in the audience who say it's an excellent shiur. Um, I actually mentioned to Rabbi Benny when we talked about it, that this really resonates with um, all of the messaging that uh, Rabbi Sachs and Ron Oliver Ha shared he talked about the universality of Judaism as well as, um, as well as the uniqueness of the Jew. Um, so I, I, I guess I'll share my screen with something for part, from Parshat Yitro, but you could really see this in, um, in all of his Divrei Torah. Um, so he talks about Yitro and Yitro being a non-Jew who comes and says, you know, he's asked, how are you? And he says, Baruch Hashem, right? He says, Praise to Hashem, and then he brings out in Parsha Yitro that both that Noah, Eliezer, and um, Yitro um, saw the importance and the significance of Hashem, even though they they were non-Jews. And he goes back to Rabbi Akiva and says, um, "Beloved is humanity, for it was created in the image of God. Beloved is Israel, for they are called children of God." So he also has, he beholds in both his hands, the universality on one hand and us being the children of Hashem and, um, and his sheep. And he actually, I, I just was reading this before class and, um, and he, brings, he brings out that, um, as we mentioned here, that uh, you bring the, on Sukkot, the, the non-Jews come and they to the Jerusalem to pray for rain and before COVID, um, anyone who was in Jerusalem could see that there was one day that many non-Jews came and they had a parade um, where they did come to the temple. They kept, right, they, they came as non-Jews. They didn't come as Jews, but they came recognizing um, the, the greatness of Hashem. Um, so here he says, so in, in his examples, I'm not going to read the whole thing, of Noah, Eliezer, and Yitro, he says, these are examples of universal universalism. They do not imply that in the fullness of time, everyone will convert to Judaism rather than in the fullness of time, everyone will recognize the one God creator and sovereign of the universe. This is quite a different thing. Um, and then he goes on, I will share the link with everyone um, and you'll be ahead of the game for Parshat Yitro, but it's, it is definitely, um, uh, worth noting in, in many of his Divrei Torah that he is um, juggling these two concepts just as uh, we see in um, Tehillim. So I'll share this link and I'll also share the link that Rabbi Sachs has. I'm sure many of you have seen it. Um, in a sense, it's a cartoon where there's a drawing and he talks why I am a Jew. Um, and that also talks about the universalism, but it talks about the special relationship with Hashem. Um, so I think... Um, you know, going back from, you know, Noah and Eliezer and Yitro, but really in our own sources going, it, you know, through David HaMelech and Tehillim and, um, you know, and Ezra, that these were messages that even coming back from Babel and coming back from Galut and hardship, 
um, we uh, we hold these two concepts that that as you said that there will be the day when Hashem's name is um, is recognized by everyone. So thank you very much for this elaboration, Susan. I enjoyed to hear this and I think it fits beautifully. Allow me to address some of the questions. I don't remember all the names, but took some notes. Why is 96 and 97 included in Kabbalah Shabbat? So whatever I read, and I read quite a lot about Kabbalah Shabbat, these research say, what did they say in Turkey? What did they say in Sfat? What did they say in the Edot Mizrach? Wonderful historical research. I was interested to learn that, but at the end, I wanted to understand the mind. What was the mind of the Kabbalah? They said, we are aware when we do our Shabbat. The Shabbat is ours. And as you wrote correctly, Gershom, when we do our Shabbat, it's a Jewish Shabbat in the sense of 92. We survived, others did not. That is our Shabbat. We have to, we have to find our strength in the Shabbat, the Jewish Shabbat. But we, have, we should never forget that we are responsible for 96 and 97 and all the nations. And Edota Mizrach, they actually do say chapter 100. I know that it's it's part of it and it was replaced now they say let's focus on that so by doing so we get a very very beautiful understanding how did the kabbalah understand the contextual interpretation in kabbalah shabbat and if you read now lecha dodi that's the message we talk about our shabbat the first and the second line and the last one but from nine three to to eight we talk about the situation of Am Yisrael. Once we come back to Eretz Yisrael, we should be open for everybody, for all the nations. That's exactly the meaning, reading 95 to 100, we should be open for everybody. Now let's have a little rest. Let's leave 100 for the weekdays. It is thought through perfectly to every detail. Fits very, very, very well the thinking of Rabbi Moshe Kordogirma. I think that the answer is, as somebody pointed out clearly, the answer is not A or N. The answer is a combination. And the answer is the law anachnu. We belong to him. Who is we? Am Israel or everybody? The law anachnu, amovetzon marito. We were previously the Jewish nation. So let me tell you, when I read first the research by Zenger and Hosfeld, these, uh, uh, it's translated to English from chapter 51 to 150. You can read it, a beautiful commentary, a masterpiece. I thought, oh, I understand the German scholars, they are interested in it. When I read the paper by, by, Jeremiah, by Jeremias, Jeremias, which I quoted, it's a German paper, and I checked it in the text of the structure, which I had in, the, in this file, it is obvious to me it is obvious to me that they are right. That is the combination. I have no doubt about it. If you see this, this again, and you see how much is quoted here from Hariul Hashem Kol Haaretz. If you say Hariul Hashem Kol Haaretz, it says, Ra'u kol afsei eretz, aretz et Yeshuat Eloheinu, Hariul Hashem Kol Haaretz. You should come and join. Please come. The role of Am Yisrael is to invite them all. That is the Hariu Lashem Kol Haaretz, which comes back here. And we invite them not to join as you will be frightened. You should enjoy the, the enjoyment of worshiping Hashem. The same way we came to him, and we should be happy, we should have a simcha as we have it here. Any other questions or comments? So uh, one just came up. Um, why are we not, uh, why, why don't we encourage um, converts? Because we don't encourage um, converts. So that is a masterpiece. This question is a masterpiece. If we compare Christianity and Islam through history, there was a lot of forced conversion. There was a lot of 
uh, bloodshedding, a lot of wars, the Holy War and the Inquisition and, uh, and uh, uh, Crusaders. There was a lot of worship. What we say here is, no, you're invited. You want to be our guests? Please come in and join. You don't have to change your attitude. You can do a Kiddush Hashem and you can sing the song of Hashem that we sing. 89 and uh, 98, you can sing. Shiru Adonai Shir Chadash, Shiru Hashem Kol Haaretz. The way you sing it, we sing it. The way we sing it, you sing it. We create a coalition with all the nations. Whoever they are, they should come and recognize Hashem. No need, no need to make a change. Not at all. But respect him and come to your insight. We will be happy to lead you. We as Am Yisrael in the Mikdash, and we will teach you and we will guide you, but at the end, we will be all together. No pressure at all. And what a statement. No holy war and no forced conversion to Christianity. No inquisition, no crusaders, no bloodshed. An outstanding, an outstanding message. And you can be part of it. I will repeat that when we come to chapter 102. There is a wonderful, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just preparing the next Chi'u. In Hunter chapter 2, it will say that all nations will come back and they will worship Hashem together. La'avot et Hashem kol mamlachot. Umamla, sorry. Behik, uh, 102, 9, uh, 23. Behikavetz amim yachdav umamlachot la'avot et Hashem. All nations will come and all the kingdoms from the entire world will come to worship Hashem. That is the vision. The way you are, you can worship Hashem. The way you do it respectfully, you are part of Am Elohei Avraham. No forced conversion. That is a major change. I think a most critical change of the message of Am Yisrael reflected so beautifully here that we respect and tolerate everybody the way he is, as long as he accepts the idea of monotheism and basic ethical values of the Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, not be our guests. Let's make a minion all together. That is a future music, which is very, very, very a huge vision. How that will translate on a very practical level, on a practical level, my friends, we should see in chapter 101.